Hello and welcome to Winter Disco Tabletop Gaming. In this video, we're checking out a new Sisters of Battle model. We're getting little bits and pieces of models drip fed to us at the moment. I think there's been like three or four new models. I'm going to do a rundown at some point of all the new models, but it looks like they're getting a fairly big run of new models because we have the Battle Sister Bulletin coming out. So I reckon we're going to see a few more things. Hmm, interesting. I'm going to say we'll be bringing you a new installment every couple of weeks, complete with reveals of upcoming miniatures, artwork, rules and more. So I get the feeling there's going to be more models. It feels like there's going to be a, not a huge range, but you know, filling the gaps that this is a battle had the first time around. Um, and in this case, we have some new close combat, heavy close combat things called the, the Celestian Sacrosants, an awesome name. I really love that name. So these act as bodyguards to the head of their order, but they're also tasked with another holy duty, purging the impure and driving them from sites of sacred significance on the battlefield. So it sounds like they have very specific roles in mind that they're going to go there and hold a position. So you kind of get the idea of what the rules are going to be. But, you know, we can see at the bottom of the screen part of their halberds, halberds, spears, whatever they're called. But let's have a look at the full model. I, okay, on first glance, we'll come back to the shield. The, sh yeah, the shield, I have my doubts about that. But overall, I love, love, love the idea of this model. This very stoic looking model. We've had all the other sisters models have just been really rehashes of what they originally were. So the old range just got a complete refresh, basically model for model refresh with a few other bits and pieces like um, some elite choices like the Hospitella or whatever they're called. But this is a new unit entirely. I did refer to heavy before. Um, I get the idea these are heavy close combat, I think is a good way to put it simply because they have that shield. Looks like they're there to hold a position like the description of them says stand there and they'll take back sights of significance on a battlefield. So yeah, I do get the impression they're going to stand there. Very powerful defenders be able to knock back people. The shields, I'm a bit dubious. It looks like a brass tub <laughs> that they've just strapped onto their arm. I'd like to see a little bit different. It could just be the fact that it's a color and it's not, it's just one face completely as in there's one single shape, which is like this bathtub shape. I'm a bit on the fence about it, um, but they've also got like a bolter strapped to it too, which seems to be an interesting configuration. The bolter is part of the shield itself. And then you just like grab hold of it and like, boo, boo, boo. that's the sound that a bolter makes. Yes, uh, the helmet. Uh, chop up that bit. I don't think it needs the little fleur de -lis on the top of the helmet. It's a little odd. I do love the wrought iron fence palings on the back of its power pack. I think that's a really good look. It, it separates it from the rest of the other units, even though it has a shield and spear halberd type setup. Having that little extra bit on the top of the backpack sort of sets them to be the more elite. You see that in a few other models. As we scroll down, we have the Palatine there. It has like that little extra bit on the back of her backpack. But we're not talking about that one. We don't know that. That's an old model now. I don't care about that. I do. It's a cool model. I love the design of the weapon. I think that is such a cool design. Ornate. Looks like it's going to either impale you, take your head off, crack you in the face with the Fleur de Lis on the back. I love the cutout of the Fleur de Lis there. This actually gets me really, really excited. We haven't quite seen weapons like this as well. Recently, I've been far more drawn to Age of Sigma models because their design, well, the designers seem to have had, have had a lot more freedom to experiment and come up with some weird funky things like weird weapons and weird armor and just generally weirdness, which I really like. And I feel they haven't really done that too much in 40K. So I wanna see some more of this going, hey, here's some weapons that are just, you know, it's clearly a weapon, but it's a bit weird. Again, the design of the shield could have been a bit more played out. I think I would probably try and replace that shield. Tie in the, I guess, the wrought ironness of the backpack in there. Make the fleur de lis more part of the shield itself. But again, I think it could be just the color of the shield is, doesn't seem right. It just reminds me of like a, a big gin bath or something like that. But I love the idea that this is the direction that they're going. So it does look like the armor itself is, well not the armor, but has like a cloth over the top of it completely. That's sort of what it looks like. I was just watching Kirioth's video. If you haven't checked his channel out, go find it. He sort of said, this would be a really good model to convert into Aegis Sigma Rided or in some kind of fantasy thing. Get rid of the backpack, tidy up a few other things. You could do a really interesting fantasy model. I think that would be a really cool thing to do. I'm very interested. I'm keen to see where they take this and what new models come out. Like I said, they're going to be doing the bulletin a few more times and I'm expecting we're going to see probably one or two more units. I'm excited because they've all been odd and weird and not really what I thought. Tell me what you think in the comments. Um, yeah, a bit of a rambly video. So thanks for watching. I'm going to get out of here 
and stop the rambling and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.